Greetings, sisters. What a crazy time we are living in. And we have never needed women more to lead us to goodness than now. And you need to be fully supported in doing that. Even if you don't think of yourself as a leader, you are leading by example, just by the way you live your life. People are watching. People are looking to see wisdom in action. And you can give them that. But you need to be fully supported in order to do that. Winter is the time of nesting. And your nest, of course, is your home. And since your realm is what you are 100% responsible for, your home is your realm, or is at least one of them. In order for things to go well in your home realm, you must have three very specific spaces that are yours and yours alone, from which you guide your realm powerfully and beautifully and for the good of all, as we always say. So let's take a look at the three essential spaces for the queen in you. Remember, there is no equal to the queen. She is the good guide for her realm. And everyone can offer their opinions and ideas. And of course, because she's wise, she listens to each very carefully and very thoughtfully. But in the end, the queen herself makes the decisions with as little ego as possible for the good of the entire realm which always includes herself, of course. Number one, your bed. It's your bed. You spend a third of your life in your bed. So sleep with whomever you want, but do not ever allow them to dominate your space. The bed that you sleep in is your bed that you are choosing to share with others. It is your bed. Too many women do not have a perfectly comfortable sleeping arrangement for themselves because they are mistakenly overly concerned with making things comfortable for all the other beings who may sleep in the same bed. And, you know, if your bed is not comfortable for you, then you will not be well rested every morning. And if you are not well rested every morning, then you will not be able to do your all important job of guiding your realm well. And you are failing all the people in your realm if you do not take care of yourself in this way. So claim your bed space. Taking care of your sleep is essential to being strong enough to being a good queen. Don't let it be like this. <laughs> if you sleep with animals, keep it comfortable for you. If your dog or dogs or even cats dominate the bed, you are letting them be in control. And in dogs, at least, that potentially leads to the unwanted and even dangerous condition of dominance in them. You do not ever want your dogs to be dominant over you. You cannot allow your animals to dominate you. If your dog will not give you space in your bed, she is disrespecting you. No queen can tolerate disrespect even, <laughs> even from her beloved animals. So push her off to the side or off the bed completely until she learns respect. And if she challenges you on this, you know you're already in trouble. You need to gain the alpha position so she will respect you. There cannot be two queens in a bed. So it's actually the same with a man, and I'm not kidding. If you sleep with a man and he dominates the bed space, be assured he will dominate in other ways. If not now, then soon. So never permit this. Allowing another to dominate is dangerous for everyone in your realm. You are queen, so be queen in your own darned bed, for goddess sakes. 
Women who make their bed every day are more successful. Make your bed immediately upon arising. If it takes you longer than 30 seconds to make your bed, you do not have a bed sheet arrangement that works well for you. And you may have to reconsider how your bed is arranged so you can figure out a way to make it quickly and easily for yourself. For myself, I got those screwy little buttons and I tacked two sides of my bed down. The side I do not get up on and the bottom of the bed. So when I get up, I can simply take the free edge and pull it snug and then tuck in that side. And the other two sides remain tucked in at all times. I can make my bed in less than 10 seconds. You have to figure out a way that works for you. And, you know, you may be one of those sleepers who has to have her feet free and the covers get all messed up every night. Uh, then if that's the case, then perhaps you just want to have a free coverlet that you straighten, but you don't tuck in. And perhaps you have too many useless pillows. I know it was once a fad to have like a zillion pillows on your bed. And I used to have tons of pillows on my bed, but really they're kind of ridiculous. So now I have only three. And the fashion trend in beds now anyway, and bedrooms is fewer pillows. If you look on YouTube, you'll see lots and lots of pillows are like out. There have actually been studies that show that people who make their beds every day, first thing, are more successful in life. It shows an organization of mind. It is evidence that you are the type of spirit who completes whatever you start. And one of the most important precepts of a spiritual life is the ability to finish what you start. And you, you would be amazed at how many people do not finish what they start from the smallest thing to the largest thing. So you're finished sleeping, you rise and you make the bed, which indicates to the universe that you are complete with sleeping for that time period, and now you are on to your beauty day. Clutter. Mm. Do not let your bed space and area become cluttered. Clutter is more destructive to your spirit and your life than you could possibly imagine. I've studied this for a long time, and the more I learn about it, the more I keep my spaces clean and clutter-free because I understand what actually happens when you don't. Clutter around and under the bed absolutely prevents peaceful sleeping. It stops energy from moving gracefully around you. It interferes with your prosperity because prosperity is all about flow of energy. Clutter makes it impossible to keep your bed area clean, and it is much harder to sleep in a dirty environment. If you're having money issues, the first thing to do is declutter all your spaces, starting with your bedroom. Clutter actually, and we know this is true from our own experience, clutter actually attracts more clutter. I know you've had that experience because I've had it so many times where you throw something in a corner to deal with later and in three days somehow the pile of miscellaneous stuff has like tripled mysteriously. It, it's just like a magnet. Clutter is like a magnet for more clutter. So it can be very daunting once that pile gets really big. So leave your nightstand clean and clear and beautiful perhaps a lovely lamp, uh, perhaps your beautiful journal and gold pen for writing your gratitude thoughts before bed, uh, maybe a single beautiful flower in a bud vase, and maybe a water container that is lovely for you to use, that you enjoy using. So when you think about it, think how welcoming this is for you when you prepare to get into bed after a long day. So think about welcoming yourself into your bed. Let it be a thing you welcome yourself into. There is a reason we love to go to hotels because there is never any clutter. 
in a hotel room. In a hotel room, we feel that we have the space to be who we are right now without the burden of all of our old stuff piled up around us, all the evidence of who we were yesterday. You think about it, everything in your home is history. Everything in your home is something that was about who you were the, when you bought it, when you bought it. And yes, it may still be who you are, but then again, it may not be. And so in a hotel room, you have the space to just be kind of blank and neutral and see who you are right now without all that burden. It's very freeing. Notice next time how you feel in a really nice hotel room, the ah that you feel. So the good news is that you can actually choose to live very much, maybe not entirely like that, but very much like that. When you think about decorating your bedroom, think about the primary energy that you intend to incubate for your future because that's actually part of what is happening when you are sleeping. You are incubating your future. That's what sleep actually is. So do you want your future to change? Then change your bedroom to reflect what you want for your future. So as an example, 20 years ago, my bedroom was very ornate, deep red colors, gold, lots of deep red bed hangings on the ceiling and coming down on the sides and bed covers and luscious things everywhere. It was clean, but it was somewhat cluttered. It looked, you know, people would say it looked, I didn't let too many people come see my bedroom, but for those who did, they said it looked like the bedchamber of a wealthy 17th century Moroccan courtesan. So that was then, it worked for me then, it got me exactly what I wanted and I shall say no more about that. But now at this time in my life, I find that I am desiring more peace, more spaciousness, more simplicity, less work, more freedom, and more quiet. So I looked up beautiful bedrooms online and some of these images inspired me to create my own beautiful, peaceful bedroom. Looks completely different, complete transformation from what it was. And maybe some of these can inspire you too. If you need more peace in your life, then remove as many items from your bedroom as you possibly can. The more furnishings, the more decor, the more uh, tables and chairs and lamps and stuff, the more art, the more mirrors in a room, the more tchotchkes on the nightstands, the less peace in the bedroom. 
the most peaceful rooms have very, very few things in them, including a TV. You should really not have a TV in your bedroom. So when I noticed that I needed more peace, I redecorated my bedroom to reflect that. And now that is what I am incubating as I sleep now, and my life is headed in that direction. And I'm supported by this space of mine, the sleeping space that I have. So you might ask yourself, what would you like to incubate for the next month, the next year, the next five years? Make a list of three to seven words that describe that and then decorate to make those words come to life in your bedroom. And whatever vibration you choose, let there be very little clutter. This is your queenly space and clutter is the antithesis of queenliness. The queen is clean and clutter free. So next up, your throne. You actually have two thrones and most women, unfortunately, don't claim either one of them properly or fully. Once again, because so many of us are in the overgiving mother imbalance, that's the imbalanced aspect of the mother archetype. The mother is the one who gives. But your queen archetype helps you realize that you have to claim your throne because doing so helps the people in your realm feel safe. When there is no queen for a realm or when she, when the, when the woman who should be queen of a realm does not claim her position properly, then everyone in the realm becomes confused and some try to vie for dominance because you have left a vacuum. Don't leave a vacuum <laughs> lying around. For the good of all, occupy your queenly throne. So your two thrones at home, in your home, are one, your living room chair, and two, your dining room chair. Your living room chair is the chair that everyone knows is yours. The one that no one else sits in, even when you're not there. It's yours. You must claim it. Do not give it up to anyone, even visitors. Even the Queen of England, if she comes to visit you, even if Oprah comes to visit you, even if Lady Gaga comes to visit you, or Beyonce comes to visit you, even if your employer comes to visit for dinner, no matter who comes in to the room, you do not give up your chair because you are queen of that realm and no one else. No visiting person can be permitted to be more powerful than the queen of a realm. Giving up your chair is, it's like disappearing yourself as the good guiding power of your home realm. If someone mistakenly sits in your chair, you can approach with a very gracious smile and say with calm confidence, thank you so much for keeping my chair warm for me. I'm here now and then look at them sweetly and expectantly. And if, <laughs> if they still don't get it, then you can take them by the hand perhaps and say, oh, let's find a better seat for you. And then guide them to another chair and then go sit firmly on your throne in your chair. Never let anyone claim your energetic power in your own home. Your living room chair should be the best in the room. Do not give this spot to a man. He is part of your realm. He is not the queen and he is not your equal in terms of who leads and who heads up the household. There can be no king equal to a queen. And if you disagree with this, perhaps you would be interested in our queen teachings online, which explain exactly why this must be so for the good of all. If there are two equally good spots, then fine. Pick the one that you like best and he is welcome to the other one. But, but never defer the good spot to a man. The best spot should have good lighting for reading. It should have a good view of the television set. It should have a place to set your libation, your cup of tea, your drink, and your book down. 
It should be comfortable for you. It should face the main entrance of the room because that is the command position. Feng Shui says that the strongest position in any room is the one where no one can sneak up behind you or to the side of you, where you can see everything that is happening, everything that is coming and going from the space. That's your queen throne in the living room. Your second throne is your dining room chair. In feng shui, there is the servant position and there is the sovereign position. Most women take the servant position. The servant position is the one closest to the kitchen, so you can jump up and serve everyone and get everyone everything they could possibly need as fast as possible. Sisters, this is not the job of the queen. So sure, as mom, as mother, you naturally have to do some serving, obviously, but for God's sakes, don't make it worse by sitting in the servant position, even if it's technically more physically convenient for you. Energetically, it's not a good thing to sit there. Sit at the head of the table, farthest from the kitchen, looking at the kitchen, looking at the main entrance to the dining room. And if you're unsure what this position is, because many dining rooms have very different configurations, let me help you. I'm happy to help you. Send me a diagram, email me a diagram of your dining room, your entire dining room, all the windows, all the doors, where the kitchen is in relation to the dining room and where how the dining room table is situated and how the seats are and where people of your realm, where your family currently sit. And I will help you figure out what the queen position is at your dining room table, if that would serve you. Like your chair in the living room, never, never relinquish your queen position while dining. If you do, respect for you in the realm will automatically drop. Finally, your desk, your third queenly essential space. This is command central. We have an entire class on how to organize your queenly desk, but here in this video are just the very basics. First, you have to have a desk that is yours and yours alone, no sharing not shared with anyone. No one sits at your desk. This must be your desk. Again, no one else can use your desk. No one can sit at your desk. It messes with the energy of your queenly position in that realm. And if you live alone, obviously that's easy. If you live in a small home with a big family, this might be more challenging, but somehow find a way to make a space yours. If you do not claim a desk that is your queen command central, then you will have little to no respect in that house. Your desk is your center for holding your particular vision for your realm, for implementing it, for being the architect of life, because that's what the queen is, the visionary and architect of life for everybody. Your desk is for creating systems that work for you and your family including, this is very important, boundaries, that all important power of the queen. And your desk is the space from which you will apportion resources of your realm fairly. Your desk is also your space for expressing gratitude. And gratitude is that magical act that automatically attracts more resources to come in for you at a steady flow. Your desk must be ergonomically correct for you. Make sure your computer screen is high enough that you are not constantly looking down because that contributes to that hump women get at the base of their necks. I have, at my home office, I have two places for my computer, one for when I am seated and another that I created for standing that I can just shift my computer to, to stand at it when I notice that my body is tired of the seated position. And you know the old saying, a change is as good as a rest. So you might want to have two different positions for your computer if you do spend many hours at your desk at home. Obviously, budget considerations do come into play here, but 
furniture is super cheap at consignment stores. So if you can find a desk that matches your energetic intention for your life right now, the same way we talked about decorating your bedroom. Years ago, I needed to be very grounded for the work I was intending to do. I was not grounded enough and I knew I needed to be more grounded. And so for many years, I had a big, heavy, ornate, solid wooden desk at home. Over time, as I changed, as my life changed, as I evolved and became different, I noticed that I was longing to feel lighter and freer. And the old desks, as beautiful as they were, I had several, they were very beautiful, but they started to feel too heavy for me. When I would go in and look at them, they didn't really please me anymore to look at them or sit at them or work at them. So I started feeling around, I looked around, I looked online, I saw pictures online, and I started noticing that the desks that I was attracted to were lighter, uh, made of glass and light materials with slender legs and silver and gold and very airy and floaty. And so eventually I did find a desk that was much more energetically supportive for what I need now in my life. And this glass desk is small, it's half moon shaped, and it has a very light uh, silver wooden frame and it feels more floaty and more free. And I have next to it a glass wastebasket and I have a crystal mirrored a computer support. And all of that has lightened the work area for me in a way that feels really good to me now. And who knows, in three years, I may be completely different. And so we'll evolve then at that time when we notice that something needs a change. So ask yourself, what do you need right now? Do you need a feeling of modernity? Zen simplicity, elegance, groundedness, something to settle you into the earth? Do you need a feeling of prosperity and luxury? Do you need peace? So find a desk for you that in its design and materials says to you what you need right now, speaks to you of those qualities. Situate your desk so when you are seated at it working, you are facing the main entrance to the room. And it's okay if you, like me, have an L shape with your main desk in front of you and your computer station to the left or the right. But preferably do not have your back to a window. Keep it to a solid wall if you can. Feng Shui says, don't have a window at your back because you are unsupported by that configuration. So have at least two seats if you can, yours behind your desk, and at least one or two for a visitor or two. Your seat must somehow be more important, more grand, higher, made out of better materials, more ornate, larger, whatever. If you're fortunate enough to have a bigger room with some space, you can have off to the side a meeting table for guests with several chairs, either round or rectangular. And if you have that additional table in addition to your desk, then make your chair at that meeting table also special and different somehow from the others. In your own space, make it clear who is queen. Let there be no doubt. Keep your desktop mostly clear for all the same reasons we talked about uh, clutter uh, before. Have some spaciousness. Don't pile all your tools uh, like your stapler and your tape and your three hole punch and all of that. Don't pile that all on your desk. It can feel too cluttered. Have some spaciousness. 
put those perhaps on a nearby credenza or shelf or in a drawer nearby where you can reach them easily and where they don't clutter the visual of your desk space. We have so little space in our lives nowadays. We are constantly being crowded in every way um, by screens, by people, by life, by information. And what most women really need now is spaciousness. You will feel so much better when you add some spaciousness to your life by letting go of things, by letting tabletops be clear and spacious and easy to clean. You can have one decorative, one wonderful decorative object that reminds you and everybody else that you are queen. Uh, I have several of those objects and I kind of change them out, you know, to freshen things up. I have a beautiful gold statue of Nefertiti, who I love. And she's just simple, plain, not very big, about that high. And she just reminds me who's queen in that space. Have only inspirational art in your desk area. You can frame your affirmations. Here's something fun to do. Take a picture of yourself on your iPhone, if you have one, and then add some inspirational text, if you know how to do that, something that inspires you. And then you can email it or shoot it off to a place called canvasdiscount.com. And they will enlarge it and put it on canvas, a big canvas, like 24 by 36 for about 60 bucks. And it is gorgeous. And that definitely claims your queen space by having a picture of yourself on canvas like that. Have a beautiful glass that you drink from or teacup. And, you know, for myself, I was very poor as a child. We had almost no lovely things around us. I had no lovely things. And, and I, I really longed for that as a child. And so as I grew up and I made a little bit of money on my own, my style became pretty fancy schmancy because that's what I always longed for as a child. But yours is whatever it is, whatever pleases you. So if it's elegant, fine. If it's whimsical, fine. If it's funny, fine. If it's earthy, fine. Drink your beverage from whatever special cup or glass that you find appealing and supportive of your energy as queen of your realm, as sovereign, as a sovereign woman. Keep that beverage glass or cup. Um, use that only when you are actively working. Don't use it for any other time. Keep that on your desk and use it only when you are actively working because every object starts to absorb the energy of whatever you're doing most of the time around it. And so if you're mostly working when you're sipping from that cup or that mug or that glass, um, it will carry that productive energy for you at your desk. And that's what you want. You've heard me talk about this before. No cheap plastic pens. A gold pen or a silver one or it doesn't matter what color it is, as long as it is beautiful and well-made. We have a rule, throw out all cheap plastic pens. They are anathema to the queenly woman who is writing. Your words are sacred. Write with an instrument that honors that, that your words are sacred. Beautiful stationery. At your desk or very close by, have some beautiful stationery and thank you notes and a supply of stamps. Make it so easy to write at least one thank you note a day. I do that at the end of my day as I am preparing for my next day. I sit at my desk and I plan my, my day to come the following day. And I write out one or two or three thank you notes for something that happened that day. And if you do this, it's a magical act that keeps your prosperity going because you are sending that energy of gratitude. And we know 
that gratitude magnetizes more blessings to you. We know this is a universal law. And in this digital day and age, the thank you note is practically a bygone thing. What a sad thing. And so when people receive one from you, they are like shocked and they will love it and they will remember it and they will remember you. I love gold sealing wax and I usually will seal mine because it's like an extra fancy thing to do that just adds something special to your envelope. It makes extra impact. It makes sending a thank you note or message, it turns it into a beautiful ritual to light the wax stick and let it burn and drip onto the envelope and you think of your appreciation for this person and then you blow it out and then you let it set for just a moment and then you take your seal and put your seal in the beautiful wax metallic gold wax is lovely they also make silver and red and pretty much any color you can buy it online and the act of pressing your seal into the hot i have some sticks of wax that are scented uh, and just give off a lovely fragrance. It's, it's a very ritual thing to do, and it brings a lovely peace and quiet to your day. It slows you down, and makes you remember how grateful you are as you send that. Make sending your thank you notes from your queen's desk, make it beautiful for you, make it a beautiful ritual for you. Finally, always tidy your desk at the end of the day. Clear the surface. Don't leave things piled on for the next day because it's very daunting. You know, when you come into your desk the next morning, it's just like, oh, you just feel all kind of deflated when you see a pile of stuff on your desk. So put things that you must do or tend to in a box or in a file or in a cabinet. Don't leave them piled on the surface of your desk. And also when you have things piled on your desk, you can't wipe your desk, you can't wipe the surface of your desk down, which you actually should do with Windex or whatever cleaner you have. You should always do that as the final thing to energetically, literally wash away that day and allow yourself to start completely fresh energetically the next day. And I know people always say, well, Ava, if I put my papers in in a, a box or a file cabin, I won't, uh, you know, I won't see them. Uh, I won't take care of them. I won't do them. I, I know I've had that problem myself. Put it in a box and then you forget about it. And, and then things pile up and you miss a bill or something. So find some way that that you are triggered to have to go to that spot to start looking for something. And you find your own way to do that. So there you have it, the three essential spaces of a fully supported queen. Set them up exactly as you wish them, as they are most supportive for you, and completely claim your queen self for your own good and for the good of all. Walk in the world like the queen you are. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.